You know what? Let's unbox some G.H.O. Joe Classified Series figures. It's morphin' time. Hello, this is Sanat here, and on today's video, I thought, let's just chill out and open some toys. You know, we haven't done that in a little bit. I kind of did it on last week's video with all the Casey Jones figures. I opened one of them, uh, you know, live, and I thought, well, let's just do that again. Um, I've gotten a bunch of G.I. Joe figures in. Uh, these are all Pulse exclusives. You can probably figure out what they are based on the box size. We know what these are, but the fun part is that it's a bit of a surprise, a little bit of a mystery. I'm going to pretend like you don't know what they are. Uh, but we have four boxes to open, and I thought, let's just do this. Let's just open them up, take a look at them, have some fun, get some first thoughts, that kind of thing. So if you like this, hit the like button, leave a comment, hit subscribe notification button if you haven't already. Um, of course, I will be reviewing these in full when I do the G.I. Joe rundown at the end of the year, like I did last year and the year before and all that. So yeah, this will be just kind of like a casual, let's open some toys and chat about them, because I, I just want to do that. And considering we're probably going to get a bunch of reveals on Friday for Hasbro PulseCon, perfect time to do it, right? So let's take a look at some G.I. Joes. All right, let's start with Snow Job. So they've been on an Arctic kick lately. Uh, there was the Arctic Bat that came out recently. It's probably one of my favorite figures of the year. And I can't wait for them to repaint it because I'm not buying multiples of Troopers anymore. Uh, there'll be a slight exception we'll talk about actually in this video. Um, I Because they keep doing these color variants, like they're like, oh yeah, here's the Range Viper in two or three different colors. Here's the Python Patrol, you know, stuff, the Crimson Guards. I, I collect all that. Um, so I don't need to buy multiples of the same troop anymore because I'm like, they're going to repaint this. But they haven't announced a repaint of Mr. Arctic Bat, Bat yet, but uh, I want them to. He's so cool with his chainsaw arm and everything. Love him. Anyways, he can fight Snowdrop. Um, I just wanted to show off the Arctic Bat. There's also a Snow Serpent coming out. What's interesting is Snowjob, who is a named, known G.I. Joe, um, he was in the movie even. You know, he got his he got his spotlight in that first animated movie. Uh, he is Pulse exclusive, whereas a figure that uses similar parts to him, the Snow Serpent, is actually fan channel, so it's more available. Um, they have these QR code things on the side. I don't know if the website's actually active. Let's find out, shall we? Um, because I haven't actually checked one of these out. Let's see. Open QR code. I, I imagine it's supposed to go to like a bio page, right? Uh, okay, generic Hasbro website. Oh, that sucks. Uh, it kind of feels like an abandoned thing. But anyways, uh, there's his accessories. There's his artwork. Let's get him open. All right, let's crack him open. Um, I like opening G.I. Joe figures. Out of anything that had uh, plastic-free packaging, absolutely the easiest, simplest experience that I actually kind of enjoy. Reason why? Because it makes some sense. You put a cardboard tray for the figure, and then you get a box of your accessories. Look how easy that is. I don't understand how we went through the whole plastic-free packaging cycle with nobody looking over and copying G.I. Joe's homework. Because, uh, yeah, I like the cardboard twist ties. I actually feel like this does reduce waste. Uh, unlike the other things where they're wrapping figures in, like, entire reams of tissue paper. See Nova Prime YouTube short I did. Um, this actually feels like it protects the figure because the figure itself is left freestanding in that cardboard tray. And then all the accessories are in these. And then also the box is nice because then now you can reuse the box for your parts. And then this is incredibly straightforward. So let's see here. So this is the, uh, the skis. And inside, yeah, here's his two skis. And they're totally fine because they're packed nice and neat. We don't have to worry about bent stuff because it's just up against the flat of the box. And then this bag just has everything else in it. So there you go. Uh, nice, simple, easy. Plus you get a box to put accessories in later if you don't want to use everything he comes with. Um, so that's, you know, that's the thing I like about the G.I. Joe stuff. And I'm going to put this up here because I want to make sure he got everything. Um, Lightning Collection Lottery is still traumatizing me. Okay, so looking at Snowjob, um, he looks terrific. I mean, it's not like doing a guy in a parka for snow gear is hard or anything, but he looks great. He is, from what I can tell, an entirely new mold, probably why he is Pulse exclusive to get that tooling cost. There we go. That looks better. Uh, he looks he looks like Snowjob. I mean, it's I think with a lot of the G.I. Joe classified figures, especially recently, there's no, like, debate. Does that look like the character? Yes, it does. 
Are the elbows super duper tight the first time they may use a mold? Absolutely. Happens every time because that, you know, that in, uh, inset pin system going on. Hey, this is interesting. So he actually has a different torso. Um, with the other G.I. Joe, they have like the lower ball joint torso and then a straight ab crunch. He actually has an upper ball joint torso. So that just moves around all kinds of ways. That's pretty cool. Uh, the hips, you know, they get good range and they drop down, which helps get around the skirt thing if you need to. Um, you've got thighs. Again, really really tight knees. I do notice that there is a slight different plastic color on the joint than there is the rest of it. So it stands out a little bit, but it kind of looks like he's run his knees and elbows into, into, um, into snow. So it's kind of like, um, it's like he's, he's got a crash pad thing going on. Uh, accessory wise, let's see. So the, oh, this is nice. And I like this. Uh, they wrap accessories that could get bent into cardboard. So uh, we haven't seen yet if G.I. Joe's going back to plastic window packaging or not. I kind of I kind of don't want them to uh, just because of how good they did the plastic free packaging. I felt like it was an improvement, especially with how they wrap accessories like that. Like, look at that. He's got his rifle is totally straight. That's awesome. Um, here's the magazine clip for it, right? Is that the magazine clip for it? I don't know. As I've mentioned in videos before, I ain't, I ain't a gun guy. I don't know. I don't know the stuff besides it goes on action figures. Um, the other cool part is you get an unmasked head. Um, I say unmasked head again. Wow, Power Rangers are getting to me because I'm not used to opening non-Ranger stuff on camera. But let's get, zoom out a little bit. I think my camera's tweaking out. But you got the uh, downed hood that goes around there. But there you go. So you got, you got snow job. Uh, so you can have him here with the hood up. Um, this is also a separate head. So if you wanted hood down, but you still want like the hood around his head. So you can have that kind of look too, which I think looks nice. So he still looks like he's going to be nice and cozy in the snow. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty good. Uh, I like having options like that, especially because I think this guy was 35. Was he 40? He was more expensive. Uh, they listed him as a deluxe. Here's his backpack. Uh, backpack looking really cool. And so I think we can store... These are actual latches. Uh, you can pull these latches off. Nope, I think these are for these. Okay, those are not for those because he's holding the rifle. Maybe, yeah. Does that fit? No? Or is that for the rifle? Does the rifle go straight in? This is the fun part about doing unboxings with me. I feel like I always plan out videos, and then there's just like, does that fit there? Uh, let's see. So we could have the pole, the ski pole here. Then does this hold the skis? I guess that's where that goes. I think, yeah, if I, if I have one critique of G.I. Joe Classified, can we get instruction sheets on how some of these accessories are supposed to work? Because, like, sometimes I'm very confused. As, as I am right now, because that doesn't seem to fit them entirely. No, it kind of does. Yeah, no, they definitely go like that. Clearly don't know what I'm doing here. Um, I did zero research, by the way. You know, I've looked at all the photos of, of the figure. Been waiting for him for months and stuff. I apparently have so I, no idea how his accessories go on. And also the box isn't really telling me anything. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so they, see, that looks like a good pack. Now, what is these two clips for? Because it's not the pistol, is not the rifle, because the rifle I think we've we've established fits there. So what are these two clips for? Because it looks like it's just not wide enough for the snowshoes, unless the snowshoes... Do the snowshoes clip together in some way? Because if they clip together and clip there, that'd be cool, but I don't, I don't think they do. Yeah. So no idea what those pegs are for. Uh, we can get his pistol. I guess I should be showing some of these. There's the pistol. Pistol in the holster, and then... Oh, he's got goggles. Snow goggles. Look at that. Oh! Oh, those are shiny. Those are cool. And because they're a separate piece, I think you can put them on either head, right? Uh, maybe just, like, under the chin here. Yeah, you could do it like that. It only really makes sense to have them on this head, but there you go. Snow goggles, and then we can just plug the snowshoes on, so they'll just slip on, peg in... And this is the only reason I'm doing all this is because I always like going, hey, can you put all the accessories on a G.I. Joe figure that, that come with it? Because I love that feature. Uh, almost every, I think, year one classified could do it. Some of the recent ones have come with more stuff than can fit on them. But there you go. Everything fits on Snow Job except for the hood, the extra head. Um, that, you know, that makes sense. You don't want him carrying his extra head around. That would be creepy. I went and looked at the fit pictures. There is an easy way to store these. You just go click, and then you put the other one on the other side. Sometimes the obvious answers are not so obvious. But yes, one on either side, and then it holds both. I don't know what I was doing with this, like, stick them together, combine them. But yeah, you can actually hold all of his accessories on his backpack. Popping in to say that I don't like the way that the goggles don't fit when you have the head under the hood. Like, it just, 
the hood pushes the goggles around too much and I can't get them lined up and it's always like too high or like too low and it just it doesn't seem to want to line up on the back of the head and I can't really get it in there to like lift the back of it and there we go a showdown between snow job and the arctic bat uh looks really cool you know i kind of imagine him skiing in and he stops because he sees the arctic bat coming and then now they're stand still uh love this design work i love the figures having kind of like matching environment stuff really cool display options for sure all right next up the cobra valkyries i bought two sets of these because we got female cobra troopers um, they're Pulse exclusive, which is, I don't know why, um, again, it's like, I get it sort of because G.I. Joe doesn't do well at retail, even though I think this line still is profitable enough for Hasbro to keep making it because they don't have to pay any licensing fees. Anyways, uh, Cobra Officer and, and Val Cobra Valkyrie Officer and Trooper, so Officer Trooper, and that's why I got two because I, when I ordered these, I was still in my get two of each trooper type. But again, I don't know if they're getting repainted uh, much, so maybe it is good to have uh, two sets because, you know, two officers, two troopers, that kind of thing. Um, let's crack one open. I think it's really cool that they added female Cobra troops to the lineup uh, because we've had only male-only Cobra troops so far. So I think it's, it's cool to kind of diversify the shelf a whole lot. Um, and by a whole lot too, I mean all these accessories are great. Um, so here is the pair of Cobra Valkyries, and then here's their accessory box. Uh, let's just, let's free them. Let's free them from the cardboard. I do like, again, I do like the packaging. I'm not gonna muse on the packaging. We've already done that in this video already. Um, but there are our two Cobra Valkyries. Um, sorry, I started making a, a theme song for them. Like this was uh, one of the 80s, uh, <laughs> 80s toy commercials would have been like, Cobra Valkyries, they're beautiful, but they're dangerous. Uh, you know, that <laughs> that's how old G.I. Joe commercials ran. Anyways, so here's the uh, the officer. Um, you can see she's got um, the uh, lighter skin tone, then with the, uh, the blue eyes and brown eyebrows. Uh, it's very similar design to the Cobra officer. I should have probably brought the Cobra officers over. I will do that in this video. I won't do it right now, but... They kind of have some similar design schemes. This uh, mouth plate reminds me of the original Cobra Trooper. I'll bring the other Cobra Troops over um, for this. But yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, this is a brand new body mold, which is great. Um, again, a little weird though, that brand new body mold yet also Pulse exclusive. That's kind of a bummer because I think that it does limit how many people can get this. Prominence of Pulse, kind, or Pulse exclusives this year is a sign that the line is doing well, but not that well. Uh, and so that's why I think I'm also like, just freaking get everything, you know, how long is this going to last? Because I love these. Uh, these are terrific. Looking at her, she's got a uh, darker skin tone, black eyebrows, uh, black eyes. So pretty cool. I like the, I like the, uh, the skin variants, kind of similar to what they've done with the different variants of the Cobra Trooper, the male one, and the officers and stuff. But let's take a look at all these accessories. There are two bags of them. So always a good time. Let's see what we got. In bag number one. It's exciting. Okay. This is all... St I think that... Yeah, they split them up per... No, they didn't. Nope. These are all the guns for the officer. Because these are like kind of that tan color that her gear is. So she's got that gun. She got that gun. I know some of these are coming with the new Baroness. She's got a backpack. It's smaller. I don't think any of the female Joes have had backpacks uh, before. A um, couple pistols here, which is cool. Uh, magazine clip, magazine clip. There's this. And then you get a bunch of blast effects here, which is just like really neat because we don't get those on the standard figures. We only get them on the exclusives. And then you get a helmet with a V on it and a helmet normal. So I'm going to imagine normal helmet, V helmet, blast effects. And then what do we got here besides more parts? Oh, there's two helmets for both of them? Yeah, there's another helmet in here, and there's an extra head. I forgot about that. Um, let's see. What do we got? Okay. So we've got this helmet, which looks like this helmet, but then you also have this gas mask head. So yeah, these are all the accessories for the trooper. So it's trooper, uh, blast effects kind of shared between them, trooper, officer. Let's, let's do some cool stuff. So let's see. We'll put her normal helmet on. I think I'll make the other one with the gas masks just to, to variety them up. Be like, you know what? I'm going to be pistol lady. She's going to be pistol lady. That's what she's going to be. She's going to she's gonna rock the pistols. Pistols, pistols, rock the pistols. Pistol ballsy. 
Uh, that the jokes are getting worse, guys, and and we're only like halfway into the video. Um, <laughs> so we got that. I definitely prefer the way the gray weapons look. You know, I I like the matching colors there, but I can see myself going for. Uh, you know what? Let's let's see how that looks on the other one before we uh, decide if I'm mixing and mashing parts here. Um, but gosh, that belt does not want to stay around her waist. It keeps riding up. But there you go. So there, there she is. She's going to be Pistol Girl. Uh, let's give her, I don't know, like a cool smoke effect. And then we'll give her, gosh, these are all like too high, high caliber. Let's give her a RoboCop effect. I always call this a RoboCop effect because it looks like a uh, RoboCop's gun. <laughs> it like fires out. Let's do that. That looks cool. We can put her other guns on here. Let's get the magazine clips in though. That's not the magazine clip for that. That is. Boom. Here's the other one. Boom. Boom. There you go. Plug that on there. And we'll plug this on on there. There we go. So yeah, that's Gun Girl. Um, she's going to be Gun Girl Lady. That, nope, that was a really bad J-drama. I think we should give her like the commander helmet. Yeah, making her look cool. Yeah, I'm not super big fan of the color on the weapons for the uh, the officer. Um, I like I think the trooper color is better. I think we'll mix and match in a moment. Um, let's not give her two pistols. So let's store her pistols away. Uh, oh, there goes the leg harness. It's got that Marvel Legends overlay syndrome sometimes, where you have to like make sure it's up on the meteor part of the leg so it doesn't fall down. Um, but she is an officer, so we're gonna give her really weird looking tan rifle. I'm kind of glad that's not straight gold. Like the render made me think it was straight gold. I think the tan fits like a desert combat sort of vibe, so that's cool. Um, I, that works for me. Which one of these? Let's do. Let's do this one. I don't tend to squeeze the hands around guns and weapons unless uh, I'm decided that's how they're going to be displayed because I don't really want them to get stuck that way. Oh my god, the helmet just doesn't want to stay on. You bump it and it just it'll pop right off. Okay. There we go, and we'll add her other weapon onto her backpack. Uh, but these are really good figures. Uh, let's look at the other. Let's get the other set out here. So the nice part about having multiples of these sets too is that not only do you get multiple weapon options, but you also get multiples of those blast effects because those can just be used on anybody. I'm gonna give her. She's gonna be Gas Mask Girl. Look at her. She's like, yeah, I'm gonna strike when you least expect it. No, Gas Mask Girl gets a helmet. I think that in general, like the thing with GI Joe and why I think people are still buying the line, uh, even though you know we're we're good, we're we're coming up to year four, uh, and it's still going, which is way longer than I thought. Um, we're over a hundred releases at this point. Um, we've gotten two Has Labs that have been fully successful. We've got you know just a ton of figures coming out, sometimes to an overwhelming degree. I think the reason why people keep coming back to this line is that fans of GI Joe are like, hey, here's a new line that is providing new designs. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we've ever gotten female Cobra troops before. I think this is a first. There's certainly been them in fiction. I mean, there's the come of comics have done it, but I haven't seen toys of it. And so I, I like that. I like that they mix in new designs, old designs. There's some classic stuff. There's some updates. You know, I, I do really love the variety the line provides. And I, I don't even mind the repaints because, you know, I like the Tiger Force colors. I'm in love with the Python Patrol gaudiness. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of cool because we can sit here and look at our displays and go, wow, that's a lot of six inch GI Joes when that kind of felt like a far off reality we shouldn't ask for like a few years ago. So I'm just incredibly grateful this line exists with the quality and the care and the attention it deserves uh, because that doesn't always happen for uh, toy lines. So, you know, it's great. And it, it doesn't seem to have any signs of slowing down. Like there was just so much coming out. Walmart's now got Night Force stuff and Dark Energon peeps. And with the new G.I. Joe comic coming out from Image and Skybound, like, you know, we don't need a G.I. Joe movie. We don't even need a TV show. As long as the toys are good, it sells to the casual market. As long as the there's some fiction for the fans. I think I think we're in a good spot. Also, I've decided that she's not getting fancy helmet. She's getting normal helmet. Fancy helmet, ladies in charge. It's kind of those. It's kind of those things that kind of blows my mind that we're sitting here, you know, doing a video about. Hey, look, here is like release 68 in a six-inch GI Joe line, and it's a brand new kind of design that we hadn't really seen before. Um, and that's the kind of thing that I, I think that's why I keep getting the line. You know, I'm not I'm not going to stop. But also, it's not even just like, oh, I'm going to get the line because it exists. I genuinely enjoy all these figures. Um, they're terrific. I really, 
I really stand by the fact that I think that they're not only, um, you know, they don't only look good, QC's good. I mean, look at these accessory cans. You can't say they're, they're not worth it. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's a single classified series figure that just isn't worth it. Like, it's the one Hasbro line that I think, uh, collectively, is anyone complaining about the $25 price on G.I. Joe? Because I feel like they, they make the experience worth it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong. That pistol's just going to have a really high caliber to it. That is me speeching while putting figures together. Let's, uh, let's put them in a proper battle pose. There we go. I'm actually happy I got four of these. Um, I might even put a gas mask head on her. Uh, just to variety her up a little bit. Um, you know, what? let's do that. Let's let's make her gas mask uh, leader. Actually, no, she should get fancy helmet because she's gas mask squad leader. There we go. I like that. I like the variety. Uh, I think I probably would have only bought one set if it wasn't for the extra heads. Um, because look at that. You know, even though I'm starting to mix and match, I might even again change it out. I don't know if I like the tan weapons that much. I don't mind them as I thought I'd hate them honestly, but I I don't. Let's uh let's bring out a couple Cobra Troopers real quick for comparison. So looking at it here, she's definitely the female version of the original Cobra Trooper design, not the later Cobra Officer design. Because this guy had like the uh, the cloth mask and some more like strappage going on. Um, I still, that's my favorite one. I like that one the most. But if you look here, you know, you got the snake, snake skin armor. Uh, I specifically pulled the target one, you know, as opposed to the other ones. But you can see the mouth plate. The mouth plate is very similarly designed. The overall color scheme the knee pads, the leg pads. So she's definitely meant to invoke uh, the, you know, like the Cobra Island, Cobra Trooper slash Cobra Infantry, more so than the more recent uh, Cobra Officer. I think that was called the Officer. I'm starting to mix up the names a little bit, but I really like this one. This one's my favorite of the Cobra Troops. They go together. It doesn't stand out in any weird way. So Cobra Army stuff happening. I just realized it's an Action Force gun. Ignore that. But uh, anyways, they look good together. Last thing today, Televiper and Cobra Flight Pod, also known as the Trouble Bubble. And I love that they know what the nickname is and put it in there. Uh, this was, again, surprisingly a Pulse exclusive, considering how many people did want the Trouble Bubble. It's iconic. Like, I look at it, I'm just, like, thinking of the G.I. Joe, you know, movie opening. Like, Cobra! You know, crashing through the night, causing terrors of fright, or whatever the lyrics are. Um, but yeah, also the Televiper... You know, it's going to be a little harder to army build Televipers because uh, you also got to get Trouble Bubbles. And this is a $55 set. What's interesting is they're also doing a Python Patrol variant of this. So this is Pulse exclusive for the regular. Um, Python Patrol variant will be Target exclusive. Assuming Target even stocks it. That's been a problem all year. Um, I totally missed the tape. I look forward to the Python Patrol one. That's for sure. I also find it a little weird. It's $10 cheaper. But I guess all the tooling costs happen here. But let's... Yeah, man, they even pack this well. Um... I look forward to the inside of the Hiss Tank box. Here is the uh, the parts box. Here is the inner tray. They even put this little like flap of cardboard. That's probably more space than we needed, but I mean, that's gonna work. It, it just, it works, you know? It holds everything together. That's the important part. And it's not like obscene. Again, it's not Nova Prime box. I'm still a little weirded out by that box design. Um, but let's get this thing figured out here. Cause I wanna get, look, we got a vehicle guys. It's very rare we get vehicles. Uh, not as rare as it's about to be, because they're doing a, doing the vamp. And they didn't explain if it was an exclusive somewhere, but they're just doing it out HasLab. Here's also the Televiper. I like Televipers. I still want Techno Vipers. I'm still missing on Techno Vipers. Um, I imagine they're coming. Um, that being said, I also know that I will be able to get, like, another one of these in garish uh, 90s colors, because <laughs> I love Python Patrol. Anyways, he looks really cool. I think, you know, in general, he's a little bit, I think the Televiper definitely is more generic looking, you know? Like, it's it's definitely the more generic. I do like the Televipers, but I'm also not sitting here going, oh man, I wish I could buy, like, 10 Televipers without trouble bubbles. I'm good with just the one, and then my Python Patrol one, and then, I don't know, there'll probably be a Crimson Guard one, and a Hiss Tank Color one. There's so much coming out, too, that it's, like, really, really hard to keep track of it all, if I'm being honest. I, I just order things, and then hope I can pay for them when they come out with this line, because, like, there's a lot. There's a lot of figures. Uh, Rundown this year is going to be intense. Um, but there's that. Here's the flight pod. Uh, it feels like it's missing its cannon, um, which is probably in the box. So what's cool is this part, the canopy, you got like the targeting thing. That flips open. This moves. This feels very vintage in the best way possible. Uh, oh, it also, does that turn? Yay, you can actually, he can, he can pilot the thing. Let's get the box of parts out. Let's get, let's get into what, oh my God. Look at that. They did that so it didn't, like, crush things. Geniuses. Why did nobody copy your homework? 
let's let's look at this. This should be all the yeah, these are all like the weapons and stuff. So this is the main gun for the flight pod. I'm gonna keep calling it the Trouble Bubble. It's it's the best name. So there's the gun for the Trouble Bubble. There you go. Uh, we got the hose connector, a couple missiles. This is a, a drop mine. Um, does that open? Does that panel open on this? Yeah, it does. You can, like look inside of that. That's not totally necessary, but really nifty. Um, this is kind of like going back to vintage stuff. All that is painted too. No stickers. Excellent, excellent. Love it. So you get a Caucasian head here. It's literally there. Caucasian head. Uh, you get a dark skinned head. And then you get a, oh, that looks sick. You know what? No offense to the other two heads, but man, if I can do that. Look, I'm not, I mean, freaking on Python Patrol, it looks even cooler. That just looks so cool with the visor thing. I love it. Backpack. Let's see. So if we put his backpack in and then we can give him a hose connector. I think this is the hose connector that goes into his gun. He's got, it's the same kind of, I think it's, it's either the same exact hose as barbecue or a very similar one. I ain't checking in this video or if ever, I don't really know if I care that much, but there you go. There's him. Uh, these are the clamps for the missile pods. So then what is in this other? Okay, plug back in. Hey, we wanna, you, you wanna look cool so you don't just sit in the, in the trouble bubble forever. I don't know who's gonna live in the trouble bubble. What is this? <laughs> I've forgotten what this thing comes with. Okay, this? Oh yeah, duh, the, uh, the thrusters. The thing that troubles its bubble. You took down three Sky Strikers in a trouble bubble, really? Cool sticker, detail, uh, danger, hot exhaust, the actual like flaps move. This is why you do six inch GI Joe. You can't do some of these details at three and three quarter inch. So plug that on there. Uh, the gun goes here. I'm doing this off memory. So hopefully I'm correct. I tossed the box away. So we're just gonna hope I'm doing it right. That looks freaking cool. I, it's beautiful. It's, it's kind of dumb, you know, cause it's like a, it's a really dumb looking vehicle. It looks like a ball of death, but there you go. That looks great. Um, I was hearing something about the mine, like the actual plugging it into places. I know in the Fouches review, he had trouble figuring out where to put it. And then I saw him post on Twitter about it. Oh, I see. So these plug in here. So that plugs in there. And then it's got that dog bone connector they talk about a lot. I wonder if the, uh, the Dragonfly's blast effects will work with this. That'd be cool. And then you just plug that there and there. So now you got the missiles. You have the option of no missile right? Or you can plug this in and have a missile. I'm always going to go for missile. Let's get Mr. Televiper in here. Sorry, sir. You don't get accessories anymore. You're done. Uh, <laughs> your, your role in this video is to sit in this pod and shoot at GI Joes. Uh, that, that's all you're doing for me now. Um, or at least until the rundown and then I can put somebody else in here. You know, I don't know who I'm going to put in here. I don't know. Oh, that's a cool detail. A little like a uh, calm thing. All right, let's get, let's, uh, let's strap them in. Get this over him. Okay, that's about as tight as Indiana Jones's whip coil, except it's a little bit easier to put in. Uh, we'll bring this back up. Let's get his hands on here. Come on, come on, little hands. Make it happen. I like how he's got two trigger fingers, so it looks like he can hold the brakes. Boom, there we go. That's literally what it looks like, guys. I want you to know what the trouble bubble has done for us. A really freaking cool vehicle. I love this. This is terrific. This is the best kind of vehicle to do for classified. It's small. You know, it's not too big. It's not too expensive to produce, not too expensive to sell. Um, oh, it actually, oh, oh, I just noticed it's got clips. You can actually secure that down close to the, there we go. That looks really cool. Like that, you can see the targeting system. There you go. And we are getting a second one. I get a second one in garish Cobra, and, uh, I was gonna say Cobra Kai colors, uh, Python Patrol colors, um, which is great. I was sold from the day they showed it to us and I, I love having it. He can just go crashing through the night. So the thing with the mine, uh, Robo from the Foosh posted it, like just plugging it into the back of the gun and then attaching the gun back on, which is totally cool with me. That works. I hope you enjoyed this first look and first impressions at these figures. I thought this would be more fun than just straight reviewing them. Of course, I'm going to do like a fancy prepped review for the rundown at the end of the year. You know, the usual stuff. But I thought, let's just open some G.I. Joes. I hadn't opened them yet. Why not make a video about it uh, just to kind of get first impressions? Overall, I love these. I mean, there's some annoying things like the little mine thing and the goggles on snow job. I don't have any complaints about the Valkyrie ladies. Except maybe the tan guns look a little weird. I'm warming up to them, though. I really am. In general, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like I said earlier, leave a like, leave a comment, tell me what you think. Tell me if you want to see more videos like this where I just sit and open toys. 
I like opening toys. It's the fun part of the hobby. And otherwise, hit subscribe and notification bell if you haven't already. Also, uh, be sure to check out our Discord in the link below. Join the discussion about toys, collecting, movies, TV, comics, everything. We do a lot. Video games. We talk a lot down there, so join us. Uh, also, check out my live streams Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern here on this YouTube channel where I talk about G.I. Joe news and all kinds of cool stuff. And you can find me on social media if you like at sound out 12. You can find my awesome app designer in the discord and on social media at darkclaw 643 and you can find hero club at hero-club.com for toy news and more. And until next time, this is sound out saying goodbye.